Okay, welcome back everyone. Andrew Dwight here. I'm going to go through the questions and answers of the webinar that we had uh, on Wednesday in Australia and I think it was Tuesday in America. Okay, quick tip and trip before we get started. You notice that I have my Pluspec toolbar floating here. I do that because when I'm training it makes it easy to see what button it is. If you choose you can simply dock it wherever you wanted to. Uh, okay, so I'm going to leave it up here just to make it easier for you. And we'll go and have a look at some of the questions that we got uh, before. So let's have a look. Okay, so the first one here we have from Robert uh, B. Can this be exported as a DXS file into or imported into Revit? Okay, so the answer, and sorry we didn't get back to you on Wednesday, Robert. We just had a lot of questions to go through and, and, uh, and uh, we tried to choose uh, the best. Okay, so going back to Pluspec here. Uh, I'll quickly just draw up a wall and no matter what it is, a full model, it doesn't matter. Everything that's drawn with Pluspec actually has an IFC category. So I'm going to quickly go to here and just show you how to do this. Okay. So you'll notice these walls here are uh, basically uh, SketchUp geometry uh, but done with Pluspec and it has all the smarts behind it. Now everything behind these scenes here have been done in IFC. Uh, so that means that they're automatically classified. Okay, so it'll be a, a, a SketchUp wall, uh, sorry, a IFC wall, IFC window, IFC roof, and so on. And the best way about, best thing about IFC, it's a compact and universal file format that you can use in Revit, Archicad. Uh, you can re-import it back into SketchUp, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so I can go File, Export, 3D Model. And I come up with a whole heap of options, and you'll notice there by default, uh, the last one I must have done must have been DWG. Yet, I also have 3DS, AutoCAD, DXF, Collada, FBX, IFC, which is the one that I use because it is a very uh, universal language that Building Smart have, have been done, and it's great to see Google implement it. KMZ, which is Google Earth, OBJ, WRL. XSI. I'm not exactly sure what that one is. Okay, and you can simply go export and it will save to a location and then you can use it in your favorite software. Now you will lose parametrics when it when it does that, but for instance the way that Revit works and the way that ArchiCAD is a different way to Plusbit works. Yet the answer is yes, you can do that quite easily. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Uh, okay, uh, let's go to the next question here, which was Okay, so I'm just going to highlight them as I go so we don't go through them twice. Okay, David from Australia, David S. Can you cover the actual printout documentation, elevation sections and annotations? Okay, it is a, a longer topic and I'm going to make it quick, David. I'm just going to quickly put a roof on top of this and it's going to be nothing special. No architectural master, please. Roof and walls. Obviously, this is IFC as well for the previous question. Submit. Uh, and I'll put a door in here, say. Uh, okay. Door and say a window over here. I'm not spending any time to locate these guys. You can do it, and you'll notice down here you have the opportunity to write in the measurements that you want that to go. Okay, and I'm going to put a window in here. So we'll have two blank walls, uh, and we'll have uh, a door there. Now the Tool, this tool here uh, will set our scenes which will basically set everything up and you'll notice it happening across the top as I speak it's setting up a whole heap of scenes that can be put into layout okay so if I go here and go elevation number one you can see I don't have a slab in there I'm going to go the right click walls uh, generate floor face from walls and I'm going to go and put a concrete slab in and I'll make it step down as well uh, okay, so we're going to have a recess width, 150 is brick veneer standard. It could be in inches or imperial, you can write it in, sorry, inches or metric, imperial or metric, you can write it in as you please. And like I say, an 86 mil step down. And you see I put the slab in there, but you can see the walls aren't stepped down. I'm going to go and step down these walls here. So simply what I can do is I can select them uh, like that, and I can go back to my wall tool, or I could right click and go edit walls and it's going to put a step down to suit our slabs. I know a lot of software doesn't do this well. I think we've sort of nailed this. Okay, 86 millimeters. Inside the eave will also have a step down. I'll show you later because I notice there's a question about that. And I go submit and you'll notice that now I have uh, everything working the way that it should. 
Now I probably don't need her in there anymore. Uh, it's more just for size and scale. I'll leave it there anyway and you can see what happens. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I actually need to save my model file and save. I'm going to save it as webinar. Okay, and go save. Okay, now what I do is I go file, export, uh, sorry, file, send to layout. Now if you're going to just want to send this to uh, your CAD or whatever, you, you won't do this, but one thing really good about uh, SketchUp Pro is it has layout and essentially layout allows you to set up your templates before you draw. I'm just going to use a, a basic one here and you can now go in and mess around with your model. So you can choose the paper size you want to do and I'm just going to use A3 landscape here. Go open. Okay, it hasn't come into scale because we didn't tell it anything yet. So if I actually go to this model and I right click and I go in here and I change my scale. Uh, I'm going to go to 1 to 100. You can change it to whatever you like. And you can see it's quite a small model. I actually might even make it a little bit bigger than that because it's such a small model. Scale, I might go 1 to 50. Okay. And I'm going to move this up to the top corner here. Now, obviously, obviously if you preset up a template, and I do have one set up for my own company, uh, you could then quite easily uh, add in whatever it is. Now, all I'm going to do is do my elevations. One thing there, just if everyone's wondering how I do this, okay, if I push control while I do it, control, you'll see a little plus comes up there. If I move this down, as long as I let go of the left click of my mouse before I do it, I have a copy, okay? And I'm going to show you how this all will work very, very quickly. And you should spend a little bit of time and obviously get this a little bit more accurate than I am. It's more for showing you. Okay, so now I have this one selected. I can now right click and I can change my scenes. Okay, so the next scene will be elevation two. You notice I have my window there. This scene here would be elevation three. And this scene here would be elevation four. And you change them around to suit yourself. Scenes, elevation four. Okay, obviously I've got one that I've duplicated. Scenes. Okay, so now I have my four uh, different elevations and I can dimension from these here now uh, and at the moment uh, I'm actually just using it over here you'll notice that we have some options here and I'm going to show you the difference I usually always keep it in raster just to get everything set out and so on the reason being is that it does work quicker but there is it is there is problems you see as I start to zoom in further my line isn't clean now there is a reason for that and I think the guys at layout did quite a good job of being able to view the file quickly and easy but if I go over here and I say okay I'm I want to have it as a vector and go okay and now you can see that my line work has now tidied itself up very very quickly okay I'm going to leave that one as as raster uh, as vector and I'm going to change this one over here to another setting so you can see what happens and go hybrid Okay, now hybrid actually allows us to deal with colors uh, and textures a lot better. Uh, it's probably not exactly right for this tutorial uh, or question and answer thing, but uh, we can also go in and change line weights and we can uh, dimension from here. And you can set it the way you want your dimensions to be by default. And the best thing about it is that if I go back to the model, I can now go and change things and it will update all of these drawings. So I'll just go back to the model. Okay, and I'm actually going to add a window into Elevation 4. Okay, and we'll choose a different type of window, say a double hung window. And I'll, I'll put two in, say, so just so we can t define the, the differences. Okay, I need to save it. Save. Okay, if I go back to Layout now, I can now go here and go right update reference. You can have it automatically updating as well if you want to. Uh, I actually must have chosen, oh there we go, there's this one here, you see. So there's my two uh, windows in there and we can actually label from here. One thing is that uh, layout actually dynamically labels things. Uh, according to where it is, uh, say we want it there, and we can go down to a drop down here and we can choose the window, so it's an AWS Vantage, and we can even have our sizes and so on. 
Okay. Uh, and away we go. Alright, try and choose this one. And now I can go and move these around to suit myself. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, and let's see how we go back. Okay, so everything can be automated and obviously floor plans and everything can be exported. It's a quick, the quickest way that I've ever seen uh, 3D to CAD work uh, and it's very maneuverable. You can also go and export from here to DWG CAD or whatever it is that you choose. Uh, export PDFs and, and so on for working drawings. Very basic guys. Uh, we will be doing a tutorial on this and going through line weights and a whole heap of extra information regarding uh, this uh, particular documentation and that'll be our next uh, webinar so please go to our website and uh, and join up to that okay so let's go back to SketchUp and I'll go back and see what the next question was okay so we have Jock here uh, and I'm going to highlight this again so that we can see Jock's question can we show the slab now Demonstrates putting stairs and balustrades in. I uh, have quite a few questions watching the web. No, I'm going to send you an email. Okay, I look forward to getting that email, Jock. Uh, yet, let's just answer the questions that you've asked now. Can you show the slab? Okay, so I, I did actually go through the slab there, but I'll go through it in a little bit more detail. Uh, so I'll go back to SketchUp. Okay, so if I go to my slab plan, you'll notice that it actually took everything away. I still have the, the lady there, so I'll turn it in 3D, you'll see. Uh, and you can see my footings underneath. Okay, uh, I'll go to say a coloured view so we can maybe see this a little bit easier. And this slab is uh, parametric, which means that I can go through and I can start to edit that slab. I can put drop edge beams and so on. So all I do is I click on the slab there. Okay, it's all gone blue. I can now right click the slab and with Plusspec 2016, I can edit the slab. I can add voids to the slab so a void would be say for a penetration for stairs so I can go add void oops, void add void and I can simply go and put in anything that I want to here now I am in clear view it isn't the best way to do this so I'm going to turn it off and I'm actually going to go in here and uh, edit this slab slab void add void and wherever you want it to go, you see, you can, if you want to lock to an axis, just go outside the slab and push shift, and you can now lock to an axis. And if you want to collate, you notice in the bottom down here we have uh, complete the loop. Just push enter, or you can click on the original. So I'm going to go enter, and I now have a void in there. That move, that void can also be moved. Okay, right click, slab, move void void, move void, or remove void. You notice that it, it now has a line and I can actually type in a distance that I wanted to move the void. So I might say I want to move this 600. Okay, and everything inside of here is estimatable. So uh, at the moment I'm only looking at the slab, so if I go and do a takeoff from the slab, uh, you'll notice that I have in there the concrete in the main slab and the footings and the drop edge beams. Okay. Have a bit of a play around with it. One thing uh, about Plusspec is that every tutorial is actually sitting inside the tool and you can click on these tutorials here and it'll take you directly to YouTube. I suggest that you go through that. Uh, I'll, I'll give, just have a quick play around um, and uh, let's add some, a couple other things to the slab. So we've already gone through a void. We can remove the void, which I can show you very quickly. Right click the slab and I can go, okay, well now I want to start to add in penetrations which would be for pipes and you can change the size of the penetration so the pipe diameter and the accuracy of the circle if you're using a large model you may want to reduce or increase the the accuracy according to the size of the model and now I can go through and we might have toilets in here and so on so I can add those in there I can move them around exactly the same as the last one uh, okay and I think that one of the most important tools that we have been working on here is our recess tool which allows you to recess bathrooms, uh, move them, edit them. Uh, okay, I'm just going to add a recess here. Okay, you can type in the, the, the depth of the recess, and we might just want to recess the slab here. So, this is all in Plusspec 2016, guys, which you should have by now. It went out last night to all of the webinar attendees. If you did not attend the webinar, you will get it 
uh, in a week. Okay, this is great for adding drop edge beams and associating cost with them. Uh, and you can go through and I'll go through here now and say I want it to be. F well, I could go five meters, but I'll go five hundred. And we can say over here we want it to have a five hundred step down. It might be for a garage or. I don't know, it could be for anything. And we can also do those recesses anywhere. And you'll notice that it increases the size of the footing with it as well. Uh, it's very powerful and it works quite well. Okay, so I'll undo all of that, guys, just so we can stay back with a nice, clean, neat, easy model. Control Z undid what I did. If I want to redo it, I can go Control Y. Uh, 